Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, tractor, 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 tractor. There we are. Oh my God. Did you see the size of that? You probably didn't. Anyway. <sighs> good morning. <laughs> oh, what a lovely day. What a lovely day. It's gorgeous and we've got a week, you know like when you get a nice day and it's the head of a nice week, you know you like you've got a, a warm week coming and it's the first sort of day of that period and everything's lovely, the air is still fresh, you haven't got this sort of this famous three days in a thunderstorm that we have in this country. And it's like that this morning and I cut the grass on uh, Monday night or something, yeah. Monday night I went out on the tractor and cut the grass and the oh the garden looks lovely. Looks like Kew Gardens out the back there. So uh, I was going to do a bit of trimming yesterday but I didn't fancy getting covered in grass two nights on the trot. So uh, but I'm just I'm running late. That's why I'm driving. I'm, I'm taking a different route. I'm taking the faster route. Normally I take the curvy route that takes me past the paper shop. But this morning, I am literally, I'm due at work in five minutes, I think. If I've got a patient at quarter two, which I might do or I might not, I don't know. Anyway, can't get in touch with the receptionist. She lives around the corner, so of all the staff, she's the one who's most reliably at work on time, because she's got no excuse. She literally just has to fall out of bed and she hits her head on the surgery door. And, uh, had another WhatsApp from um, a member of staff this morning who says her dog's not well. So, you know, and, I, don't know. I didn't used to have much sympathy for people whose dogs weren't well, but I do. Having come down this morning and done my customary look into the corner to see how the dog was, only to find the a shoe rack, <laughs> I have got a bit of sympathy with her. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, those of you who sort of listened to the podcast in the past, you'll have heard me talk about this sort of teleocratic management style, which is not Greek for running late. It stands for management by shared purpose. In other words, uh, everybody uh, knows what they're trying to achieve and works towards that objective or those objectives. And... So when you get a message from a nurse in the morning saying that a dog's sick and she's going to have to take it to the vet, then you know, prior to my under my old autocratic management style, which is the one that most dentists uh, uh, follow practice, um, I would have started ringing around telling people to come in to cover. But really, it's her responsibility to make sure that uh, she covers. So, um, but the other nurse who's uh, available has been unfortunately pretty uh, silent on the issue. So I don't know whether I'm gonna have a nurse today. So it's a perfect storm. I'm running late. That's just cause I'm just not a morning person. My eyes still hurt. The daylight is still hurting my eyes cause they're still bleary. I'm like, there's something wrong. You need to get, you need to want to go to work, you know. No, I'm not going to overtake him. I've got a, a Land Rover in front of me, which you can always overtake a Land Rover. It doesn't matter what speed you're doing, you can always overtake a Land Rover. But I'm not going to bother. You know they say better late to work than early to the graveyard. So. Besides, if I have got a patient at quarter two, and I do keep them waiting 10 minutes, it'll be the first patient I've kept waiting for 10 minutes for a year. So there you go. No, so um, yeah, so they have to sort each other's cover up out, which is give them the responsibility of um, organizing their own rotors. And also cross training is a good idea. You know, you've got to, uh, uh, I mean, for example, our receptionist is well, she's not a fully trained nurse. She can, she knows where everything is. You know, she can help out in uh, if we're short-staffed. 
and the nurses are all fully cross-trained so they can all nurse for every dentist and do reception. So that's great. We had a few grumpy bastard patients in yesterday, but we're winning the round. We're softening them up. They're like butter in the sun. They're just melting a bit. I had a bloke in yesterday. He's got the demeanor of a professional killer. Doesn't talk. Doesn't, you know, uh, Every, all, every one of our patients we offer like a goodie bag which has got a toothbrush in it and a mirror and some disclosing tablets and a little leaflet with some advice on how to brush your teeth etc etc oh he didn't want that he didn't just didn't want it he said no thanks I'm like it's a, it's a free what's it you know just free it's just yours you can have it no don't want it thanks so okay first patient I've ever had who refused a goodie bag so so I write all this down in the notes because I don't know about you but I, I am not bad at remembering I, I can remember after a few years I get to the point where I do know everybody's names uh, but for some reason it's with the computerized records it's just less essential that you memorize everybody's name so and even the nurses don't do that you know they've got this funny thing where they say to me oh uh, you know, uh, Mrs. So and so, and I go, No, <laughs> and I go, You know, Mrs. So and so, who you saw yesterday, and I go, No, just remind me, just remind me again, you know. So, uh, and it's like, uh, you know, it's annoying when they do that because they've got they know her name, obviously, but I don't know how they know her. They may have looked her name up, I don't know, but no, they know her name. And then, so they're like, they're having a go at me for not knowing the patients by name, all of the patients by name. And yet, when when the patient comes in, what do they, they don't say, oh, Mrs. So-and-so's in, or Mrs. so and so They say, your next one's in, your next one's in. Like, you know, they don't bother to use their names either. So come on, you know. That's a, oh, let me out. No, that, oh, no, that's done it. That has done it now. I've just, I've, I've adjusted the framing on the source and now the framing is going to be wrong when halfway through the video I'm going to need to change the framing to match the reframing I've just done now. You don't need to know this, it's just us, it's, it's just us directors, film directors, me and, and uh, you know, Guy Ritchie and Ridley Scott, we, we, uh, we just, when we hang, this is just the way we talk. So um, anyway, yesterday went quite well. Recorded under sterile conditions, absolutely brilliant. Um, lip syncing, sorry, high speech chicane. I'm doing exactly what I complain that people do around my corner at home. Driving like Jackie X. You don't know who Jackie X is, do you? Driving like Jensen Button. Anyway, uh, yeah, so teleocracy, marvellous. Basically, just tell the staff what they're supposed to do and let them get on with it. And then, uh, and which is what? What, can you remember? Can you remember what it is? Do good quality dentistry, make money and have fun. And if they don't do it, then you just complain that they've done the good quality dentistry and had fun, but they haven't made any money, so they're not getting a pay rise. That'll soon focus their minds. Got bloody pensions coming up. There's something in my inbox about pensions. I'm supposed to choose how much I want to give away. Ah! That's a no-brainer. The amount of money that the government squanders, and they want me, they want me to pay for staff pensions. Of course they do. They've pissed all the money up against the wall, haven't they? On quail's eggs. So, yeah, so the lip sync thing went quite well, so I think that's working quite well. But the problem is... Oh, sorry. 
This is this is a faster route here, but I do have to concentrate. I do make uh, I do apologise if I lose my track of thought. Yesterday, I had a sneezing fit. Right, I had a sneezing fit halfway through the video, and I thought to myself, that's no problem. I'll cut that out. <laughs> sneezing fit. I have a big old sneezing fit. Cut it out later. Who's going to know? Everybody. I forgot to cut it out. Okay, so I do apologise for my sneezing fit yesterday. So you will notice that there are a few cuts sometimes in the video. And that's usually because something happens. Not anything important, just you don't need to you know, waste your time. You're committed to spending 20 minutes watching this. That is my bargain with you. 20 minutes, sometimes 21. That's, you know, that's it. If I get stuck in a traffic jam, I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half. So, do good quality dentistry, make money, have fun, teleocracy. And also, the other thing I would say is uh, tangibility. You know, uh, th there's a, <clears throat> if you want to read one book on dentistry, it's called The Principles of Service Sector Marketing. And it's not about dentistry, except it is about dentistry. It's all about marketing services in the service sector. And it really just, you know, you don't have to be an expert on service sector marketing, okay? Although this is no doubt a textbook for a course on marketing. But, you know, when you don't, you know nothing about a subject, whether it's uh, economics or psychology or uh, anything, physiology or anything, and what you do is you just sort of, you think, I'd like to know a bit about that. And then you get to know the basics, you know, just the very, very first principles, the sort of the real no-brainers that, and but because you didn't know them, you're like, oh my God, really? Of course, you know, of course. And uh, service sector marketing is, uh, is, a, is something that we all need to know about as dentists, because we're marketing the service sector. You know, I used to go along to the BDA and old, people like Joe Ritchie would say oh of course yes well dentistry is unique you know we're not really it's not is it a good or is it a service you know and if it is a service it's a unique service it's something it's not there's nothing unique about dentistry it's just a service it's like uh, you know and they say oh opticians well they market glasses glasses are a good therefore uh, is it goods marketing or do the glasses correct your eyesight which is a service therefore is it a service that you're marketing and not a good Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. who cares it's you know things can be partly service and partly goods that's fine lumber if you go and buy timber like i did the weekend that's a good right but if i'd asked them to deliver it it's a service i used to have a a patient who was in the plastics manufacturing they did plastic injection molding thing Oh, I used to go on about how he was the wealth creator of the country and people like me who were in the services sector were all parasites and uh, you know we all the money we made or owned and all our houses and everything had all been provided by him because he was actually doing work he was actually making stuff and I said to him like you're you're a plastic molding and I said your bloody molding factory would be no good without any plastic I said some driver's got to drive it there you know where where do you think you get the plastic from Oh, well, yeah, okay then. I said, you know, when you've made all your plastic mouldings, what do you do? They all pile up in the car park. I said, and then people, what, people come and buy them out of the car park, do they? You know, or do you have another driver who drives them off somewhere else where they can be made into other things and delivered, you know? Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. That, that, but that's just, that's all parasitic. That's all, actually, I've actually made the money making the things. I'm like, really? No, you haven't, because they're worthless. What you're making is worthless unless it's delivered. It's worthless. You've added no value at all. All you've done is just taken a bunch of plastic beads and made them into a different shape. <laughs> Principle of service sector marketing. Marvellous book. Get yourself a day glow highlighter when you order it and just, when you're on holiday abroad for a week, Take it with you. Everyone's going to think you're a right weirdo and just sit down somewhere nice and sunny in a deck chair and just read it like a novel. And highlight the bits which are a complete revelation. And I'll tell you, there will be some bits of it. About how services are sold. Goods are manufactured in advance. And then sold. Services are sold in advance. 
and then manufactured. Ah, uh, brainwave! There's a lot of applications. Right, okay. What am I talk about Prince Service Extra Marketing? You know, it's, it's an interesting topic. Anyway, I'm at work. This is my deal. My deal, I have to shut up now. All right, okay, nice to see you. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.